I'm now on Cyberpunk 2077 and I'm on a scene which has this lovely bright fan ceiling light. Unlike you can see on the video, it's not just a giant white blob, it actually has some subtle detailing on the light itself. So a nice variety of closely matching bright shades should be displayed. And using my Peak 1000 nit settings I'm using now, indeed they are. Also various dark and medium dark shades surrounding it shown nicely. So I measured the brightness of the fan ceiling light. These brightness readings were obtained using appropriate HDR calibration on the game to avoid significant highlight detail crushing. As I mentioned, remember that the ceiling light does have some nice intricate bright details and I was trying to maintain those. And they should always be visible even if the centre of the light is very bright. And that's actually the reason that the EOTF boost setting here lagged behind the Peak 1000 nit setting. Even then, I was quite generous with how I calibrated the game using the EOTF boost setting. This is actually just one of many scenes in various games I tried which highlighted a key frustration I have with the EOTF boost HDR mode. How you configure the settings on the calibration screen of a game or your system, including the Windows HDR calibration tool, which I demonstrated in the best settings video. Well, that depends on the exact makeup of the calibration screen itself. That isn't an issue I had with the other HDR modes. It was really very consistent across various different in-game calibrations and the Windows HDR calibration tool, as I'd usually observe. But the EOTF boost setting makes various EOTF curve changes and really just means that the calibration can wildly change based on what's being shown on the screen at that time. I'd also stress that the issues I'm going to raise in this section with the EOTF boost mode, they aren't helped by running through the Windows HDR calibration tool. So at the moment I'm using the Peak 1000 nit setting still and I've adjusted the exposure of the camera to try and show some of the details you can see on the fan light and also some papers down here which are very bright. They have a lovely glow around them but there's also writing which you can actually see on these papers. I'm now running the EOTF boost mode, calibrated in the same way as with the graph I just showed you with the peak luminance there sitting around 720 nits. So it just show this well, decent highlight detail, not quite as good as the other setting, but not too far off. But the issue I have is with these papers here, they're completely blown out and over brightened such that the writing is completely invisible. And that's not just because the camera's picking this up in a weird way, it's because the writing simply isn't there when the character is positioned in a similar way to with the other setting. And I'm just gonna switch over to the other setting just to show you and not move the camera at all. So here we are, peak 1000 nits, appropriately calibrated in the game, and magically the writing appears. If I wanted to get these kind of little details to appear properly without this sort of highlight detail crushing, using the EOTF boost mode, I'd have to calibrate the game in such a way that the peak luminance is gonna be limited to below what it would be just using the True Black 500 mode, which is really completely pointless. If I'm gonna be doing that, I might as well be using the better calibrated True Black 500 setting. This scene on Cyberpunk 2077 demonstrates the differences between the high brightness modes very nicely indeed. I'm currently using the Peak 1000 nit setting and I can see good highlight detail regardless of how I position the character in the game. Although the APL average picture level, that will change as I move the character around in this particular scene. So as more of the bright sky is introduced, the ABL of the monitor kicks in more heavily, the automatic brightness limiter. And with just a little bit of that bright sky introduced, the monitor can pump out the higher brightness for the highlights there. I can also see dimming of medium shades in this scene as the APL increases and the bright shades dominate, so when this kind of thing happens. I'll demonstrate this in a bit more detail in another scene shortly, on another game actually, but it would include some elements of the sky which look dimmer than they should, but also various other elements of the scene, plenty of concrete there which shows medium shades which are dimmed more than they should be. I've now switched over to the EOTF boost setting. That does avoid the medium shade dimming where bright shades dominate like this but also spectacularly blows out the highlights. It's only possible to overcome that by limiting the peak luminance significantly via the in-game calibration, like this. And that's to levels that simply give an overly dim and frankly washed out look to everything. They also limit the peak brightness well below True Black 500 levels. And of course, if you then shift to a nice night scene on Cyberpunk, and you're still using the same calibration with the EOTF boost setting, which doesn't blow out these highlights, you're gonna get very limited peak luminance for what should be spectacular small bright elements. This may or may not be a useful reference in the video, but just for completeness in this scene, I'm now running the True Black 500 setting with appropriate in-game calibration. So whilst it does limit the peak luminance to below what I would have seen with the higher brightness modes, it does still show nice brightness to the highlight. It doesn't crush them together in the same way as the EOTF boost did when it was set to this kind of brightness level. It's also more consistent because the monitor's ABL isn't sort of kicking in and slackening off to the same extreme degree. Those medium shades don't shift around as much. And the medium shades are shown appropriately as well. And so are the darker shades. 
So just a nice overall representation to this scene, even if the brightest elements aren't quite as bright as they were, for example, when the camera was like this with the peak 1000 nit setting. And to add as a general point, it isn't an easy choice which HDR mode to use on this monitor. I do actually like the brightness boost that the True Black 500 mode gives over the typical True Black 400 style modes that QD OLED models usually have under HDR. I do notice it, and also I do appreciate the consistent and well calibrated nature elsewhere. But if I'm really after that wow factor, I'll generally go for the peak 1000 nit setting. I'm on Battlefield 5 now, again running the game under HDR. This scene is notoriously unforgiving for OLED monitors, and it causes the ABL behaviour to kick in heavily. There are plenty of medium to bright shades being displayed. Good mini LED monitors are able to show bright details like the sun and glints on the weapon, as well as the icy surface down there in a nice bright and brilliant way, in a very eye-catching way as well. In this case, I measured the sun around 400 nits, or sometimes a little bit above, depending on what's going on in the rest of the scene. And that was the case whether using the True Black 500 mode, as I am just at the moment, or if I was using one of the high brightness modes. And that surpasses the usual QD OLED 350 nits or so that I've recorded on models that don't use this 500 hertz panel. I also measured a patch of blue sky to the right of the sun, shown with some readings here. True Black 500 provides an accurate representation of medium shades like this, and you can see the sky point I measured significantly dimmer when you use the peak 1000 nits setting, so 127 nits with the True Black 500 setting versus 80 nits with the peak 1000 nits setting. Conspicuously absent here is the EOTF boost setting. That's because I wasn't able to get a good representation of the sun, or indeed other bright elements in this scene using that setting. So with this True Black 500 setting, which I'm currently using, it shows a good array of bright shades up to the luminance limits discussed earlier, and it gives a good representation of medium and also dark shades. I switched over to the Peak 1000 nit setting and recalibrated the game appropriately. Whilst the bright and indeed darkest shades, so shadow details and such like, are represented in a pretty similar way to the True Black 500 setting, those medium shades, such as the sky, and also various areas of rocky surface or mountain, are dimmed significantly. I've now switched over to the EOTF boost setting and have the game calibrated as per the guidance in the in-game calibration. The medium shades are now brightened up again. The dark shades are still fine as well. But where has the sun gone? And any highlight detail is now completely messed up. Your eyes do not deceive you. It does look that overexposed and ridiculous. So the sky is just appearing as a crushed together bright bloom. You can't even distinguish the sun or what used to be the sun from the surrounding sky, let alone appreciate any finer bright gradient detail here. To really fix that up, or at least fix it up as best you can, that requires changes to the in-game calibration, which I've just done, to levels which will limit the peak brightness even in this scene to below True Black 500 levels, and it will certainly limit those scenes where the monitor isn't as ABL limited and it could pump out much higher luminance than it's allowed to given the in-game calibration. So for me, the True Black 500 setting is actually the clear winner in this particular scene, whilst the high brightness modes both have their own separate compromises, if you're setting them up in a way which will give appropriate brightness where the monitor becomes not ABL limited. On Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for simplicity, I'm just going to stick to the peak 1000 nit setting. This is an example of a low APL scene, dominated by dark to medium shades, with any bright elements being relatively small. So in this case, the moonlight reflecting on the water surface down there. This scene and others like it are represented in a similar way using EOTF boost and peak 1000 nits. Whereas with True Black 500, you'll have more limited brightness peaks, so the glint on the water surface there won't be quite as bright. Not to say it's dull or anything like that, it still has a decent pop to it, but it's not quite as much. And the glint itself, it's not just pure white as it may appear on the video, it actually has a nice silvery purple rim to it, and again that's something which W OLEDs don't capture properly. And at the same time, it's lovely depth of these medium shades, great shadow details, with the darker shades being nice and deep and inky. So although the EOTF boost setting is actually fine for scenes like this, it doesn't offer any advantage over peak 1000 nits. And as I've demonstrated with other scenes, it can really mess up that highlight detail elsewhere. I personally would have preferred MSI included the sort of setting which some other manufacturers like Gigabyte, Asus and Samsung sometimes include on their QD OLEDs, and that's one that would give an uplifted look to medium dark shades in dark dominant scenes like this, but would maintain a generally accurate look to bright dominant or indeed those in-between scenes. So they give good highlight details for bright dominant scenes, unlike EOTF boost, whilst avoiding medium shade dimming like you get with the peak 1000 nit style settings. 
Some people can also appreciate the uplifted medium dark shade representation in darker scenes like this one, using those kind of boosted modes, which this monitor doesn't offer. So some of the subtle details here have brightened the room up, you might have noticed. So they're masked now by reflections on the screen surface and also the sort of lightening up of the darkest shades as well. They just blend in a bit more than they could. I do like to show this difference on models which actually have such a mode and it makes more sense there than me just talking about it. So you can see the comparison, but it's just something which some people do appreciate, particularly if they like to use HDR in a well-lit room, perhaps for viewing comfort reasons.